All right, guys, LXL Maths Paper 3. What are high yield topics? This is going to be specifically for the stats element of Paper 3, all right? I did this poll the other day, and majority of you guys, 71% chose stats. I'm incredibly limited for time. It's literally 11.39 p.m. right now. I am bare tired, but I've been working really hard to get this done for you guys, um, and hopefully it helps you out and gives you at least one day to cram that Paper 3 content um, so let's see what's going on. If you guys haven't seen my paper one and two pure videos, I essentially have analyzed every single past paper from 2018 to 2023. So six papers in total to see where the high yield topics are. So essentially, if you're not aware, high yield topic is just a topic that has favoritism by the exam board or things they need to show and test you on. Normally, it's the, the more difficult topics at, at second year, right? That's what you're going to be testing on. And that's what we're going to look at. So there's a couple caveats I want to mention here is the large data set. Okay, so we'll get into this a little bit more detail when we look at the subtopics. But basically, I do not know what degenerate decided to put this in here. Like this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen to make you try and recall certain caveats and knowledge from large data set to apply to certain questions. I think it is so pointless. It has no real world application whatsoever. You're never gonna do this in real life. You're never gonna try and, <laughs> as someone who uses data sets every day at work, like this is just ob like ob ob obscene, obscene degenerate design this. So I don't know why I would not be surprised if it disappears from the next specification, but this is a little personal <laughs> rant. Um, but yeah, it's normally like one or two marks. We'll look at it a little bit more. I wouldn't stress about revising this if you're not too confident with it and you haven't already allocated some time to that because it's honestly not that important. There's a lot more important things to prioritize your revision time with. All right. So with that done, if you've seen the paper one and two pure video, you know that I created like a really big document where I mapped the different topics and subtopics and group them to the LXL textbook. I have not needed to do that for this one because there's a lot less going on. Um, but Basically, all it is is the topic is here right in the specification and then the subtopic is this 4.1, for example, or 3.3. OK, the main caveat is I've grouped 5.1 stats hypothesis testing and 5.2 because there's so much overlap going on here within questions. It would have taken me long to like separate the little marks within the mark scheme to uh, allocate it to each of these separate subtopics. So I just grouped them together. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You should be practicing this as a whole anyway with application to questions. All right, so with that specification stuff out of the way, let's jump into the topics here. Then we'll jump into the subtopics and then we'll jump into the history. So like, what does it look like from 2018 to 2023 so far? So as we can see here, guys, the absolute highest marks has been from statistical distribution. So topic four, 96 marks. Second place has 59 marks, okay? So quite a big lead there. You can see in this chart right here, this is just this column uh, charted up for you guys. Y-axis is percentage of marks, X-axis is the topic. As we can see here, there's a couple new things, okay? Something that I haven't mentioned yet is pure maths, okay? So there is pure maths synoptic knowledge that they can apply to stats. So just keep that in mind and I'll discuss what that is within the subtopics in a minute. And then like I mentioned guys, you have the large data set. So 14 marks in total, it's come up every single year, but when it does, it's only got 2.3 marks on average, okay? Outside of that, you can see that basically everything else excluding statistical sampling has come up every single year. And then the pure maths is just a bit random. Okay, it's a bit random. They they sort of throw it in when they feel like it. Last year had some integration stuff, but we'll look at that right now. Let's look at this, okay? But before we do that, if you appreciate this and you find that it helps you out to focus and fine tune your revision um, and do some mad cram in the day before, like the video, I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot. As we can see here, guys, with this chart, this is marks this time, this is not percentage, but we can see, even if it was percentage, it'd be the same distribution. We have basically a linear decrease from the highest subtopic to the lowest, which I think is really interesting. So basically there's some mad high yield stuff going on up here, okay? And that's what we're gonna focus our time on, hopefully the day before the exam. So in first place right here, we have normal distribution. Okay, and then you got binomial distribution in third place. So obviously, like you can see here, that is why this is the highest topic overall. There's a lot of marks going on, 24% collectively. 
And then from there, you have probability fundamentals. So this is everything that you do in year one. I don't think I have it here, but if you open the Edexcel spec, guys, you will see 3.1 and everything that's in there is what you need to know for that topic, okay? It's basically all the year one stuff you do. You also have conditional probability and then the year two probability as well. This topic isn't just conditional. It is mainly that, but it's also some of the year two stuff you need to know, okay? Then we have bivariate data. This is mainly scatter graphs and correlation. Okay, there's some other areas within that, but so far it's mainly been scatter graphs. Okay, now with this outliers and inference, it's mainly outliers from box plots. That's what it's mainly been so far. There is other little areas that are involved. Let me rub this out so we can draw in again. Um, but yeah, for the most part, let's let's make this a little bit less thick. Okay, hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing with normal distribution. Okay, so remember, like I said, guys, I've grouped 5.1 and 5.2 back into 5.1. Okay, so you've got the binomial and then you've got the application where you're actually conducting the statistical tests. All right, that was hard to say. Um, so that is what 5.1 is, if you weren't too sure. So outside of that, guys, measures and center of spread has come up every single year. This is basic like mean, variance, standard deviation, interquartile ranges, stuff like that. Okay, it's really important that you get to grips with those fundamentals. It will help you a lot. And you normally have to apply it to some sort of diagram or table. So normally, it, so far, it's been like a box plot, um, stuff like that. Okay. And then like I mentioned, guys, you have pure synoptic knowledge. So twice, so it's come up twice so far, arithmetic sequences, they've integrated that into the stats. And then last year, there was eight marks available for an integration question. Okay, there was multiple subparts to it. Um, I think it was up to part F in total. And a few of those questions were to do with integration. You had to do integration by parts and area under a curve. Now area under a curve is actually explicitly mentioned in the stats portion of the specification. I can't remember exactly where it is, but it is there. It doesn't mention integration, but it definitely mentions area under a curve. So that's probably why they put it in. Is it likely to come up in 2024? I don't think so, because it came up last year and that was the only time it's come up as you can see here. Okay, so I don't know if you wanna screenshot this, so you get it on your phone or whatever, um, and then you can just do bang out some past paper question revision on physics and math tutor or however you do your revision, okay? This probability distribution is all the year one stuff before it jumps into binomial. If that wasn't clear, I split 4.1 into part A and part B. This is the binomial element. So just keep that in mind as well, but you can just combine these into one thing. If you want for your revision, it'll make it a bit easier, but the question formats are different. Okay, normally this one you're given a table or you're asked to draw a table or something like that where all the probabilities add up to one. Okay, hopefully you know what this is. You should have done these questions before. Um, but yeah, that is that done. Let's move on to the subtopic history. Let's do this. So basically this is just the same as this table right here, but we see the year on year marks that each subtopic received. All right, so going back to something like the large data set, you can see that it comes up every single year. So it's probably, I'm pretty confident that it's gonna come up in 2024, but thankfully it only comes up for like one, two, three marks. Okay, 2.3 on average. So that is good. And again, this is just recall, little caveats of information, units, stuff like that you need to be aware of, but it's honestly a waste of time. Uh, I'm gonna move on before I start raging out about the large data set. I would focus on all of the high yields if possible up here where you're getting high average marks per paper, like seven, six, five marks um, per paper. That would be a great starting spot. Obviously you can combine things together and revise it as an entire topic. That is perfectly fine. But then you've got stuff broken down into year one content and year two content and just how, by how A levels work now, because you do all your exams weighted in year 13, you're gonna have mainly complicated, difficult year two content. All right, so master the fundamentals of year one, but you should be spending most of your time on difficult year two questions, all right? So because the sample size for the questions or the marks, I should say, for stats is so much lower, like 300 marks opposed to the 1200 that we have historically for uh, pure one and two, there's uh, less to go on, but it's still a pretty clear pattern of where the high yields are. Okay, so do your best to focus up here and then 
maybe pay some attention to 2023 and think uh, what didn't really come up that much that historically does come up quite a lot. So for example, the one that pops out to me is bivariate data. Um, so it received six marks in 2022, but nothing last year. Again, this is normally to do with like correlation, scatter graph, stuff like that. Um, but that didn't come up at all. So that maybe that's going to come up this year. I'm not too sure. And then other years when it does come up, it's nothing crazy. 3.2 marks on average. So I wouldn't stress out on that too much. I would 100% focus the majority of your time on normal binomial distribution, probability distribution, hypothesis testing, measures of center and spread, and probability fundamentals and conditional. That is where I would spend the majority of my time. And then from there, you can just focus on the weaker areas. Um, if pure does come up, it's kind of random what they want to do. If you want to brush up on arithmetic sequences, feel free to because it's come up twice so far and it hasn't come up for the last three years. So they might try and do some application into that. But I'm not going to use up any more of your precious time, guys. I'm sure you want to get back to revising. You're nearly done. You're nearly there. It's all good. I wish you all the best, guys. Peace.